We're gonna have a cactus party. Ah. We're gonna have cactus party tomorrow. And Rebecca and Thomas Solo. They wanna have uh, people all over at home tomorrow to do this garden club. Uh -huh. I know, but that's one of the things that you talk about. Oh, they are, yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, okay, well, welcome everyone to the uh, November uh, Garden Club. I know you're all going to be excited to hear um, all that Rebecca and Tom have to say about their house and their garden. About seven years ago, we decided we wanted to move here. Oaxaca. This house uh, is all powered by solar. Oh, our, our panels are up on the roof here. You might have noticed on the road there's no electrical lines. <laughs> Nothing. So we're totally dependent on our friend the sun. And, um, but the house, Rebecca wanted a modern house where you have all the modern conveniences. So during the day, uh, the sun charges a bank of batteries we have up on the roof that provides the electricity that we use at night. And we're also very conservative with the use of our electricity. I mean, now, living here, we are very conscious when we walk out of a room and we forget to turn a light off. It's one, one of the other says, oh, you left that light on. <laughs> and um, for those of you who live in Oaxaca, you know that uh, water is very precious here. And especially out here in Teotihuacan, we get less water per year than you do in Oaxaca. Uh, looking at the, uh, the weather records uh, for Oaxaca, they get, depending on which one you, you look at, they get uh, 27 to 29 inches of rain per year. And we got 18 inches this year, which is not too bad. And so we collect all of our rain, all the rainwater, all the water that we use here is from the rainwater. And we we built the roof of the house that slopes from that end all the way down to this far end. And there's two pipes that go down. And below the end of the house, we have a 50,000 gallon cistern. It's basically a swimming pool. And um, so for Every inch of rain that we get, uh, it computes to 1,650 gallons of water. Now the garden at the end over here, and it circles all the way around the house. We had to water all that during the dry period. And from December 25th to May 30th, we used 20,000 gallons. Rebecca's trying to use plants that use as little water as possible. And, but they need to be established, so they need a lot of water. And uh, we're just keeping our fingers crossed that uh, we're going to have enough water to water everything in addition to this new garden uh, by the time the rains come next June. Uh, when we built the house, we separated our sanitary lines and our gray water lines. And so all the water from the sinks and the showers and uh, Washing machine. Yeah, washing machine. Uh, we can use that for watering our plants. Very classic desert garden designs. Um, in the books, like I have several here, and there's some here that are just really terrific. Uh, if you want to take a look at them later, uh, they talk about putting color and things that need water close to your house so that you're watering those more often. I talked to Eric, who had been training to be my gardener. He lives in the village, and he had to leave to help with one of his kids. Uh, all, that was his excuse. He's kind of shy, so I think he didn't want to be here. Um, he, uh, he, he waters all the pots three times a week. Um, and then uh, plants 
up a back behind the house, and you'll be able to see them when you walk around, like the bougainvillea and the flax and uh, barberry. He waters once or twice a week, depending upon whether or not we've had rain. And then the cactus, if it rains, he doesn't water those at all. If, during the dry season, he'll water those once every two weeks. When we moved here five years ago, I started propagating in pots. When we moved into the house, we moved 450 pots out here. And I continue to propagate now. And I would say over half of the plants in the garden I've personally propagated, either by cuttings or from seed. Um, I've gotten them from friends. Um, and. I mean, it's just amazing what you, the soil here and climate here will let you kind of grow, um, propagate almost anything. The native. So the yeah. soil, it depends upon when we put it in. The first year that we put garden, the garden in, the first part, which is these beds around the house and back behind, um, we had a mix of aged uh, cow manure, sand, and leaf mulch. The second year, uh, thanks to Naomi, I learned about uh, Seconda, and I mixed 650 kilos of worm compost with sand, with leaf mulch, with soil from the crescent that's right down below here, because they were dredging it, and so it got mixed in our cement mixer. And uh, in a proportion that would work well for cactus. And the cement mixers are on the other side of the house, so we just put in the proportions by buckets into the cement mixer and mixed it all up, and it worked really well. And Tom and I did the garden design, and we laid it out with garden hoses uh, to get the outlines of where we wanted it, and then the dump truck dumped what they could, and then the rest of it was put in by wheelbarrows and shape and rakes. Cactus and succulents, they cannot be in standing water. They will rot. So you have to be really careful, which is one of the reasons why most things are planted on mounds. However, we had a couple of flat spots that we thought would drain, and they don't. So we're waiting for the dry season, for the press to dry up enough to get a dump truck in, to get more, rivers, more silt, which we will then mix again and we will build up some of those flat areas so that the water will drain off of them and then it goes into the walkways. But we want to make sure that the walk, everything is draining well before we put gravel down in the walkways so we don't have to take it up and start over again. I have a pile of leaf mulch up there, one pickup load that's ready to go into uh, a mix when I get some more worm compost. I've got another 50 kilos ordered. Um, and mix it with sand, and uh, I will replenish certainly all the pots. And as I get more compost, I will put more out, but it's hard to come by. I do fertilize. Uh, if I have the worm compost, I do it with that. Otherwise, I use triple 17 because I can't always get enough organic compost for a garden this big. And um, the pots, I will fertilize once every two months because more water goes in them so the nutrients drain out. And um, the garden, I will, ideally would fertilize twice a year. I do have compost piles that are in the back of the house in three tiers. One that's fresh clippings, one that is intermediate, and one that is pretty much composted. And we turn it once a week. And I keep rotating it. Uh, <laughs>